Let us put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ into action. As you know, members of the church observe the law of the fast one day each month. The doctrine of fasting is ancient. It has been practiced by biblical heroes from the earliest days. Moses, David, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Isaiah, Daniel, Joel, and many others fasted and preached of fasting. Through Isaiah's writings, the Lord said, quote, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free. Close quote. The Apostle Paul admonished saints in Corinth to give yourselves to fasting and prayer. The Savior himself declared that certain things go not out but by prayer and fasting. Hi, this is Ben. Thanks for listening to Hope in Christ, a Come Follow Me podcast. I am so glad you're listening in part because without you, this podcast wouldn't be worth the time that goes into producing it. But I'm also glad you're choosing to listen, because it truly brings me joy to be able to share with each of you some of the beautiful and inspiring truths of Christ's gospel. I love the scriptures. I love that whenever I'm having a hard day, I can open them, say a prayer, ask a question, and be uplifted by the encouraging and calming power of the Holy Ghost. And boy, do I need the Spirit's power in my life. I just don't know how, as a recovering sinner, I could ever get through this life without the sanctifying power available to us through the Holy Ghost. In addition to the Scriptures, another very powerful gift the Lord has given to us to help us access His power in our lives is through the Law of the Fast. This episode marks part four of our study of the Old Testament book of Esther. We've already told most of the story of Esther in the previous three parts over the last few days, and we'll tell the rest of the story in tomorrow's capstone highlight. Today, I'd like to take just a few minutes and look at only a few verses from the book of Esther. Let's rework to build up our storyline again. Go back with me to the point in chapter 4 when Esther is presented with a really difficult choice to make. She discovered that the king had been tricked into a plan to take the life of all the Jews in the kingdom. This was a problem for a few reasons. One, the Jews were God's covenant people. How would the work of the Lord go forward without them? How would the prophecies be fulfilled that the Messiah would be born through the house of David? If the Jews were to be exterminated, God's whole plan would seem to have been frustrated. Another problem with that fact was more immediately personal to Esther. She was also a Jew. So she had a choice to make. Mordecai suggested that perhaps she had been placed in the palace for this very reason, to influence the king's decision and save God's people. But then there was the law that said if she were to enter the king's inner court without an invitation, an invitation she'd not even received for the last 30 days, then she could be put to death. What was Esther to do? In chapter 4, verse 16, she gave her impressive reply. And I say impressive because it was. Her answer speaks volumes about Esther's faith and her hope in Christ. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so I will go in unto the king. Go, fast ye for me. Sounds simple enough. But how could withholding your body from food or drink do anything to help her situation? That's where God comes in. As you likely know, fasting is not about starving yourself for two meals, or in Esther's case, for three days, night and day. Fasting is about drawing closer to God. It is about seeking after His blessings. It is about allowing our spirit to maintain control over our physical body. It is about providing the sufferer relief from their burden and to obtain power from God to break all yokes. 
It is about intensifying our focus on righteousness and sacrificing some of our physical and temporal desires. We'll likely talk a bit more about fasting as we approach the end of Isaiah where he so powerfully teaches the Lord's purpose for having us fast. So today, I'd like to focus for a minute on the power that's available to us when we do fast. In my experience in church leadership and in life among many friends and others, I've encountered a lot of individuals who have experienced difficult challenges, even addictions and other harmful habits. And I'm not sure if I know a single person I've interacted with on a specific challenge or addiction who was able to overcome their vice without drawing upon the power of Christ that's available to us through regular fasting. And the same goes for anyone experiencing a hard time in life. When fasting is done joyfully with a sincere desire to reach into heaven to access Christ's power, that power comes. It really comes. Of course, a sincere fast is always coupled with fervent and meaningful prayer. I find it inspiring that Esther's response was to fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. Three days is a long time, and if it was summertime near Arabia without air conditioning, it would feel even longer, much, much longer. This wasn't about putting in the minimum effort in hopes of getting heaven's attention. This was a clear declaration of Esther's faith. She knew that if the Jews in that city were to join her and her maidens fasting for three days, really putting in effort that showed their sincere desire for this blessing, even above satisfying the natural pangs of hunger and thirst that a mortal body will always experience, she knew that if they were to join together in such a fervent fast, that God would respond. She knew that doing this would allow God's will to be done and that no matter what his will was, it would all work out in the end exactly the way God knew it would be best, and that he would compensate for any innocent suffering. Faith, fasting, and prayer. That is a formula for miracles. Elder Jeffrey R. Holland has declared, I bear witness of the miracles both spiritual and temporal that come to those who live the law of the fast. I bear witness of the miracles that have come to me. Truly, as Isaiah recorded, I have cried out in the fast more than once, and truly God has responded, Here I am. Cherish that sacred privilege at least monthly, and be as generous as circumstances permit in your fast offering and other humanitarian, educational, and missionary contributions. I promise that God will be generous to you and those who find relief at your hand will call your name blessed forever. Close quote. Coming up in just a few weeks is another fast Sunday. And maybe you have a special reason to fast even before the next fast Sunday. Either way, how would you like to increase the power you receive by obeying the law of the fast? Here are a few questions that might help you evaluate how you can increase your access to God's power the next time you fast. Do I fast with a purpose? Do I get up on the first Sunday of the month, suddenly realize it's fast Sunday and choose to offer up a quick prayer and go without breakfast before church? Or do I prayerfully seek out a purpose for my fast? Fasting is always easier and more effective at bringing real power from heaven when we seek specific blessings from heaven. Second question, how is prayer included in my fast? Do I simply pray to begin and end my fast? Are there ways I can incorporate prayer into more of my fasting experience? And the third question, how often do I allow myself to think about how hungry I am during my fast? Do I shorten my fast and justify it because I put in some effort and now I'm just really hungry and everyone else around me is eating, so why not? If you struggle with this one, Try to find a few moments to open the scriptures, a general conference talk, or kneel in prayer and just recharge. Remind yourself why you're fasting and try to focus on that purpose and the desired blessings. The words of a hymn express for me some of the greatest blessings that come from fasting. 
In fasting we approach thee here, and pray thy spirit from above. will cleanse our hearts, cast out our fear, and fill our hunger with thy love. Like many of you, I have seen the real power that comes from the Lord when we fast. I have seen lives saved, comfort given, and chains broken. I know that when we fast, we invoke the mercy and power of Almighty God to come to our aid. He loves us. He is eager to bless us. And as the Savior has said, some blessings can come only through much prayer and fasting. So if you're waiting for a blessing, don't give up. Keep exercising your faith in Jesus Christ and continue to engage in meaningful prayer and faithful fasting. The Lord's will will be done for you. Thanks again for listening today. That sums up part four. In our scripture highlight tomorrow, we will have the opportunity to look at the story of Esther through the lens of how we can accomplish the ultimate sacrifice and purpose of our life. Find joy in living the gospel today, and remember that you can always fall back on hope in Christ.